see. It's like preparing, setting up your webinar for YouTube Live. Oh yeah, it says live on YouTube on my screen now, or on the screen. Awesome. Yeah, there it is. All right, well, hello yeah, everybody. We are live, I believe. And um, Sage making sure here, data processing, let people kind of pop on for a second. We got three people uh, up in the chat and, um, and we're excited. So for everybody, let me kind of give a little, little brief introduction for, on a couple things here. And, uh, and then we'll go ahead and get started. We're going to do a new uh, pretty regular show here on the Learn GPR YouTube channel. If you don't know me, I'm Dan Bigman, uh, the GPR professor. And so just kind of a little background is uh, we've put out tons of obviously free content on YouTube, but we're going to continue to innovate and, and, and look for new ways to give value to our students, subscribers, uh, uh, audience. Um, we're just out there trying to help as many people as possible. And so with this new kind of format, we're going to go live, um, try to go every week, maybe a couple times a month, and, uh, uh, and basically run through some data processing. People have asked us, you know, to, to teach more about data processing, backend stuff. And so, uh, so that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to do. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, subscribe to the channel, okay, hit the subscribe button. Um, and, uh, and if you like what you hear here in the webinar, then, then, or the live stream, then, uh, hit the like button and ask questions below. If we can't get to them during the live feed, we are going to get to them afterwards. We will answer your questions. We want to help. Okay, we want to help. And uh, I hope everyone's doing well out there. I know we're in kind of some interesting times is, is the way that I'll, I'll say it. And uh, I just hope everyone's well. I hope you're healthy. I hope you and your families are safe. And, um, and the right thing that you can be doing right this second is being on this webinar, this stream and learning. Take your time to learn. Um, we've done lots of learning ourselves. We've, I mean, I've bought like four or five courses, not just for me, but for Tyler, uh, who's here also, who's, uh, uh, one of the guys who works, uh, uh, with me as well as Dominic, another guy who works with me. I mean, we're going through ocean now we're going through sales trainings. We're going through, I, I bought a thermal imaging, uh, uh, course because we're trying to step up our, our game as always. And this is the time uh, to do it. And so what we've done for people is we have, um, uh, basically put up a couple of new courses online and uh, you can go to learngpr.com uh, and check them out. And so we have a GPR slice course. It's over four hours of content broken down into bite-sized lessons. We have uh, a new D GPR data processing course. It's over 30 lessons now. It's going to be more by the end of tomorrow, um, but we're adding content and we've recently restructured our entire platform and how we uh, uh, we've basically reduced price to a rate that we've never done before. So definitely check it out. All right, well, who am I sitting with now here? This is Tyler Stumpf. Tyler and I go actually pretty way back. Uh, way he's back. A boy. Yep, to, to from the start. And so we had met back in UGA and he's been working for me now for over a year. And um, and he's been on projects all over. We went to Montana together. He went with uh, another one of our guys to uh, Biloxi, Mississippi. Um, he's trained, uh, gosh, hundreds of people now at, at this point, mm -hmm. uh, PR. And so he, um, so he's, he's one of the guys and he's really one of our GPR slice experts. And so uh, what we're going to do today is go through a data set and kind of just go back to some data and reprocess, you know, take a look at it, answer questions, see what happens. So I'll go ahead and put it over to Tyler. Tyler, thank you so much. Appreciate you, you being on. Um, you didn't really have a choice in the matter because <laughs> make you get on here anyway. Um, but I'll go ahead and turn it over and let's kind of get started with some of this you know, data processing. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is just pop open and share my screen, um, which should work here. There we go. Um, and so we're going to work through a gridded data set in GPR Slice. Um, so let me kind of get you oriented to what the data set looks like. Um, and so for those of you who might not be familiar with GPR Slice, um, there's a whole bunch of different options, a whole bunch of different filter and processing techniques, uh, we're going to stick to some of the basics because we find that a good 90 to 95% of all of our data uh, really only needs uh, very basic processing. Um, so I'm going to pull up on the grid here. So the grid you see here is a, a 10 meter by 20 meter grid. Uh, it is collected in 25 centimeter transects in both directions. Um, and to get a better view of what I've already done, I've gridded it and I've gone ahead and reversed it 
uh, because we've we collected the data in a zigzag pattern. So you can see here the reverse map, every other line is reversed. Um, and so that's the extent of what we've done. Uh, so what I'm gonna run through is a manual data process from beginning to end. Um, this is very similar to what you would get if you run a blue box, um, but this gives you a little bit more freedom, a little bit more control with the processing techniques. Uh, so first thing once I did is I've got the, obviously got the data file set. Um, I'm gonna stick back and make sure that it's just the basic data. You can see here all of the lengths and distances and everything's pulled in correctly. Got the time slice or the uh, uh, time windows all set correctly. Um, and if we go to our convert data menu, we can see what the data looks like. You can see that the uh, there's a quite a large gap at the top. It's not been time zero corrected yet. Um, and we can see the kind of DWAL filter here on the right side. Um, and so uh, to kind of correct some of that antenna drift that you might have depending on what machine you're using. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit batch gain in Wobble. What this is gonna do is apply that DWAL filter and not change any of the gains yet, um, just to get all the data converted. And uh, from here, since I've already reversed it, um, what yeah. I've done is kind of gone in and just done every other one manually because the uh, files don't 100% line up um, because I, here, let me, let me show you, right? All right, Tyler, here's a question for you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Tyler, so, so here's a question for you, right? What do you see, ten, you tend to see in um, in the 1D DWAL filter, right? So, you know, we, in, in all, all systems now, or mo most systems tend to have a, pre-built in DWAL filter. Yeah. Um, and when they go into a proprietary software package, the proprietary software tends to retain that filter applied and they call it raw, but it's not raw, right? Yeah. It's, got a, it's got a DWAL on it. In GPR Slice, they actually bring in raw, like they mm -hmm. strip away of everything and come in raw. Have you found that to be really useful to start from zero, literally zero as opposed to, you know, would you think that having a, because um, you've used some other software packages too, you know, having kind of the uh, uh, 1D done for you already, or do you think it's worth having zero and letting the system kind of do it, you know, for you? Like, is there a benefit, you know, to having it come straight raw? I mean, I, I prefer raw. I prefer yeah. like being able, uh, give, give, give me more options. Give me the ability to see like, so the, this is a, a Mala machine that we use an older um, model with a RAMAC monitor with an 800 megahertz antenna here. Um, and you can see that there's not a lot of antenna drift, even like pre when I did the original mm -hmm. kind of run through mm -hmm. here, there's not much drift. And well, so if you pop, what if you put the games on it? What if you throw the games on it? Oh, yeah. So it's, it, it really isn't right. right yeah. There's not shows you that there really wasn't a lot of drift to that system on that day. Yeah. Um, in that particular system. I like sure. being able to see it. I yep. like being able to see and, and say, you know, um, yeah, there's drift. No, there's not. You know, I, 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 that's just my preference. And sure. So I think there, there's right, one, 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 one other question then before, before we move on. So in this software, it gives you the window, right? So the window, the wobble length mm -hmm. is going to determine kind of how much it's going to smooth out that curve to bring it back to zero. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, do you ever adjust that or you give, or do you take what the software gives? Because I mean, the way I look at it is the software is smart, mm -hmm. the way that it was written. Yep. And in this case, you know, I generally, almost always, or have always allowed it to give me what the best fit window is. Do you ever adjust that? Or do you say, you know what, like, let, let me take a look at what the best fit window is, apply that and never change it. I, I, I have not really gone in and edited it much. Uh -huh. uh, I haven't found, I found it to work. I mean, when I've yeah. used the, the window that's given, I've always found it to be very on point. Yep. And it's the same thing. Uh, and we'll talk about it here in a little bit with the background filter. Sure. Uh, I never, right. never, ever change the settings, the auto set from the background filter. Sure. And we'll talk about why, but like it, yeah, I, yeah. I, the, the software does a very good job, I think, of and how it was coded and ensuring yeah. that it reads what the data is giving you and kind of provides you a good, um, a good setting. Awesome. Um, so yeah, so like I said, uh, I've already kind of reversed it, um, depending on if you did zigzag collection or not, you might not need to do reverse. Um, now coming into navigation, um, most people who are not running a grid base, you're just gonna run your GPS 
navigation and let the navigation run through the GPS. Um, then you can either use field or uh, artificial markers as kind of the other um, routes. So I am just going to run through artificial here uh, because for this data set, I th I've found that that's runs, that's kind of the best route with how it was collected. Well, that's, I mean, you did, you did. So when, when would you go through another one, right? I mean, you'd use the GPS if you use the GPS. Mm -hmm. In this case, you yeah. use the grid, right? But, you know, when would you use a field marker potentially? That's if you're like literally clicking in the field yourself. Yes. Yeah, if you're walking in like marking. A, it, it's an older option. Yeah. That isn't necessarily relevant all that much anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to use it when we were walking and you had to walk at the constant speed. Yeah. Or, or you had the little you know, the dinger tape. and you had to, yeah. yeah. Well, we had, a, yeah, we had a tape laid out and you'd have to go every meter. You'd click the little button. Yep. And, and if you walked, you know, inconsistently, which I definitely do. Yeah. Um, I mean, I walk like a thug sometimes they say, so <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know why I'm not, but anyway, you know, I, I kind of have a, a little lean, but it, it's like, you know, I definitely don't walk constant. And so it might be a little bit more in one meter, a little bit less in mm -hmm. another meter. Um, but when I press that button, it would it would retain it, mm -hmm. and that's where you'd use the field markers. But today, right, you have a, a survey, good. or you have a GPS, and yeah. it just you know it make, makes it appropriate that we have found. But that's when you would use those other ones. Have you found? Yeah, in the interval one, you can set your scans per marker if you're like very like if you want it set like every you know x amount of distance. But mm -hmm. yeah, or it's generally the only ones that I've uh, ever used are artificial or GPS. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, okay, and so from here, uh, we could just move left to right. What I'm going to go ahead and uh, hop into now, though, is I'm going to hop into the filter menu so we can start looking at some of the data and begin to work through um, kind of what processing steps we need to take. Um, and so I always use uh, the hyperbola match search window just as a very easy, quick, let me pull up a radar graph. I don't have to go to another menu. I'm already in this menu. I can hop back and forth between my multiple filters. Um, I can always change what input directory I'm in and I can always hop back um, and see in real time what it looks like. Um, and so we can see here huge, huge gap at the top of my data set. Um, this is the, the ground surface or the antenna noise. Um, so what I need to do is I need to hop out of this menu and go do a time zero correction. So I'm gonna come to the radar uh, menu and come to a radar gram editing select my input directory, my radar, which is my raw. Um, and then there, it gives you a couple different options. Um, I usually always do method one. It's just kind of what yeah. I've been raised on. Line by line. Line by line. Oh, method one. Yeah, method one, yep. Yep, method one, because I don't like losing and data. That, it retains the most data. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't, exactly. No reason to cut data if you don't have to. Yeah. And well, so, I, I will say this. The, the, there was an interesting suggestion at one of our trainings, and I never thought about it this way, but, um, but the person made a good point. This is, look, this is great, by the way. If, if you haven't taken any of our trainings, definitely go to learngpr.com and, and look them up. Um, it, we all learn from each other. And so what the nice thing about a, about a group training is um, everyone gets to benefit from everyone else's experience or kind of point of view. And somebody, this is the only time I've ever heard it, made a case for number three. Okay. The case that they made was it's the most kind of unanimous, right? So where does number one start? If you're choosing it, and so if, if you're physically choosing it, it's hard to say. Maybe the computer does a better job than we do. But even number two, grabbing exactly that peak, there's some debatable. But if you look at where it crosses from a negative to a positive or positive to a negative. It's going to be the same. It, it's going to be harder, right? It's, it's going to be more unanimous. So that was the only thing I heard. But I'm from the same path that you're from. I mean, it's how we – maybe if it was from where we – you know, we came from the ultimately the same school. But um, but not losing data is is, is pretty – is pretty important to me. Yeah. And as long as you're consistent with where you identify where the you know the responses are. But yeah. um, everybody give me the most options. Quite a few and people watching. Data. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. That's that's um, me. Everybody who's watching, just want to make a, a, a is definitely type in your questions below. We're happy to answer them. We'll try to answer them during the live kind of broadcast right now. And if we can't, I promise, promise, promise that we will answer your questions after the uh, broadcast. You know, mm -hmm. so definitely put your questions if you have any questions about any of these processing steps time zeros, D wows, or anything Tyler's about to go through, which is, now it starts to get fun, by the way, but yeah. put your questions in and we're happy to answer them. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just hit- Because uh, I can see that you're watching. Yeah, right. 
the auto zero S line by line edit, go ahead and let it automatically detect this um, and pull through and we'll pop back into the filter menu after. And you can see where it went, min time, max time. It kind of tells you what the offsets are and what it's doing to the, uh, the radar guns quickly. <clears throat> So what it's also going to do is automatically switch your info file to make sure that your uh, time window matches the data so your data doesn't look jumbled up. Now, this is a really important tip. I think a lot of people, um, if, you, if you're not familiar with GPR Slice, uh, it can mess things up. So if you, I'm going to click back to my original info file just very quickly to show you this. So if I come to my original info file and I come to my edit um, folder, which is my time zero corrected, and I look at the radar grams, oop, edit, radar, it's going to give you this. It's going to give you this really weird looking data. And this is because your um, my, my new upgraded info file changed my time window based on the shifting of the radar grams, right? And so yeah. if it's looking at original raw data with a wrong time window, it's going to mess all of your data up. It's going to give you this type of Im image. So it's very easy. Uh, to just have a wrong info file selected. So if I go back here to my raw and I reopen this back up, edit raw, you can see my data came back and it shifted. So you just need to make sure that you're in the right info file for the edited software or the edited data for that time zero correction. Um, and if you ever see that, that kind of jumbled data there, um, always check your info file. Um, so this is where we're at. It didn't, it looks like it, still didn't shift it all the way up. Um, so I'm gonna kind of look here and see kind of where I'm at and what scan I'm at. It's like sample, maybe cut it at like 11. So what you can do is if you wanna manually come back and truncate it more, you can come back into the radar menu again and you can truncate the top of this radar gram higher up. So you can come down here and you can, trun you can use this uh, menu to truncate scans. You can also append up here to truncate um, I think, uh, edit radar. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it where it's at because I don't want to start because I I don't remember where the where my yeah. yeah. Well, why don't you go through the filters because we don't have a ton of time, but let's start going through yeah. the uh, the actual data processing yeah. and filtering and rather than getting super nitty gritty how, on the yeah yeah how 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 background and band pass you know are gonna affect it and how we're gonna use it to clean up data. Okay. Uh, you know, a big reason to do this web cast and to do it, you know, regularly is look, I, I always have an agenda, right. For everything mm -hmm. that I'm doing. And the agenda for this is we too often get people coming to us saying they don't want to do data processing because they feel like it's this monster, right. This beast that they can't handle. Mm -hmm. And I think what's important here is showing, look it, in a half hour, you know, 40 minute webcast, like we can go through an entire data set and get the thing processed up looking nice and slick and that it's not so uh, unapproachable, you know, especially folks who are new in GPR, it's a, it's, it's data processing is very approachable and there's reasons to do it. Do you have to process every data set you ever take? I'm of the opinion, no. I know that I may not be, you know, I, I, it's not everybody's opinion. I don't think every data set needs to be processed, but the ones that, you, that, that require it or that you could get some more info out of, I think are worthwhile. And you don't have to take hours upon hours or even days on days to process data sets, you can quickly run through some stuff mm -hmm. and get it looking nice, tight, slick, and, and, and interpretable by a, a client. So, you know, that's a, kind of the point here. And everybody who's listening, by the way, if, you know, do me a favor. If you do currently use a software package, pop in what software package you use in the comments uh, uh, below uh, on the live stream or, or below the video. You know, we'd love to hear what people are using and kind of, you know, what your experiences are. Mm -hmm. But go ahead. Yes. Show so kind of the, the first thing I'm going to do here is um, you see this banding at the top, and I can see some horizontal banding a little bit below. Um, so what I want to do is I want to run a background filter to kind of remove any antenna noise, any back, uh, any kind of horizontal banding in the data. And I mentioned earlier I always use the auto set button. I never, I never change this. I always leave it auto set. And the reason why is because this background filter is going to scan the data and try to identify any type of response that is horizontal in nature up to a certain length. And so you can set that length as short or as long as you want, but you don't want to remove real horizontal data. Um, and so this length is so long that it's only going to remove a band that spans the entire radar gram. So I'm gonna go ahead and just run this really quick and show you that, that quick removal of that horizontal banding. Um, 
Always change your input directory whenever you change or whenever you run a filter. It will pop back into the search and you can that's, see- and, but, and that's particular to this software. Yes, that's for this software, yeah. Yeah. And so you can already see that banding at the top disappear. Remove that antenna noise, made the- And from the bottom. And, and the yeah, and the yeah, and the bottom. And it made the data a little bit more clear. Um, it's still kind of gray. I'm gonna have to regain this a little bit. Um, but what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and pop into a band pass to look through the um, look through what the data looks like. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get this to zoom in correctly. Okay. Um, so what I whenever I come into my band pass menu, um, I always hit the AGC. AGC is an automatic gain curve, and it's gonna kind of automatically add a gain curve here uh, that it estimates as the best for the data. Um, it allow, There's two different ones you can run AGC to, um, but it does some, some different processes here. Um, with clipping, I, I prefer the just AGC gain, just easy, easy, um, easy way to go. And then I hit help set. And what this help set does is it kind of automatically detects your high and low cutoff for your band pass and your, for your, um, for your filter. So, Running across the radar gram here, you can see kind of the distribution, the frequency distribution of kind of what the antenna is putting out and what it's receiving. This was an 800 megahertz antenna. Um, so most of the responses should be from around that 800 range. And you can see a spike here kind of in that area. Uh, if I switch to a different radar gram at the top here, you can see that same spike in uh, the most of the returns coming through is from uh, that 800. And so um, I'm, you use left click and right click to set your high and your low. I'm gonna kind of cut my low a little bit higher. Um, I think that looks pretty pretty okay there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of the spectra and then just hit the band pass. And you can see here it auto populates your high and your low cut and megahertz. It's gonna run through the filter real quick. Done, switch to band pass and pull open our view. And we can see again, the gains applied so it's a little bit easier to see mm -hmm. the responses a little bit further down. Uh, and then any of that kind of fuzzy up and down responses that you see across the data have been removed, um, which is really great. So you can I can just kind of sit here, flip through some of these radiograms and we can begin to see um, the responses coming out a little bit more. Um, so this data is from an archeological site um, in kind of a sandy soil, uh, looking for very ephemeral uh, post holes, basically looking for a building. Um, and so some of these responses are. Um, I mean, that looks. That, I mean, there's a lot going on in there now. It's it's very it's a very busy data set. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's because I used an 800 antenna. I used 25 centimeter transects in both directions. So the data is is very very um, detailed. Um, mm -hmm. And it just. But in these cases, right? So in in these cases, though, <laughs> when it gets that busy and that detailed, and you have a preset conception of what you're expecting, right? It's hard to see a wall as a hyperbola when there's that many hyperbola in your profile. Exactly. But seeing it top down exactly. and being able to look for, oh, okay, well, here's a linear feature. Here's a linear feature. These might be walls or, you know, sets of postals or whatever. Right. Like, that's kind of when you get to that, that step. Exactly. You know, if, for a lot of the folks who are watching, you might be in utility locating and it, it you know, it, it kind of can happen there too. Sometimes, right. If it's, if it's simple and you can just trace a single hyperbola over and over again, that's fantastic. Sometimes though, you're, 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 buried service be embedded in a background of stuff and it's hard to see what's what and that's one of those critical cases where using the data processing is going to be helpful to be able to look at it from a top-down kind of resampled 3d perspective because you can see linear responses as opposed to random isolated individual responses um and that kind of seems like it's what's going on here. I mean, I'm excited yeah, to see what it's, it's, you know, when I originally looked at this data, when I collected it, um, I, I, it was, you couldn't really tell much from the 2D views. Um, you can mm -hmm. say, yeah, there's some responses, but like, what is a, what is a actual response? What is not? Um, and the one thing that I had to yeah. do with the data set is I could, I can't hyperbola fit because I don't know if I've hit anything at 90. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I did instead was I buried and did my own dielectric calibration for the site. So I buried a, a piece of metal, I ran over at a 90 degree, and I was able to, to kind of calculate the correct dielectric for this site. Mm -hmm. That's what this is populated here. Um, so basically all I've done up to this point is a time zero correction. I've done a background filter and I've done a band pass with a gain. That's all mm -hmm. I've done. So that's all that I think I need at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and come into slice. I'm gonna just do help slice, help thick um, in terms of auto populating with the uh, software. Yeah, what the slice thickness should be, sure. 
50, I, I suggest 40 to 50% overlap. Dan, I know you use 50, right? Yep. Yep. I was, a, I originally like grew up on 40. Mm-hmm. I don't think, I, I don't, I don't think it matters too, too really much. Matter. I mean, I think that it's a, uh, um, kind of a, uh, I don't want to say personal preference, but all I know is, is I have to look towards the people who I look up to and who taught me and, um, you know, and some of the, including Dean, the guy who wrote yeah. this software was, you know, always adamant about 50% over. Mm-hmm. And so I said, well, you know, uh, if he's saying do it, do it, <laughs> right. I mean, you got to recognize the people that kind of have been there for a long time before you ever came along. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, and that's why I did it. But I think the point here is a substantial amount of overlap is going to be pretty important and critical. Yes. Um, you know, some of these software packages come out, they have zero overlap in their, you know, in, in, in their, in their, uh, slices and it's like so choppy Mm -hmm. and having that overlap allows such a smoother transition from top to bottom um you know is 90 percent overkill probably probably yeah (laughs) but you know but 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 zero or 10 or 20 percent you know might might be not enough um maybe something where about 20 or 30 percent you know might be an appropriate you know it's going to depend on per person and, and and what you're doing but but yeah i'm a pretty um big believer in 50%. Yeah. And in part, well, I've shifted most of my process into 50 now too. Yeah, I, yeah. I have well, not yeah. seen a difference. And if that's what you and Dean both utilize, it's, it's worth doing. Yep, yep. Um, so it's worked out. I mean, that's, you know, that's the yeah. thing is it's, it, for me, it's definitely worked the out. The data looks good. Yeah. yeah. And when I, and, and when I change back just to make sure that it's still the right thing to do, it's always, you look at it, it's like, yep, that's mm-hmm. why I use yep. the 50 yep. because it makes that much sense. Yep. Um, so here, gridding, the next thing, just to make sure that all your slices are in the right location. Um, again, the help set in GPR slice is so good. Um, for this data, because of how detailed it is, I'm going to use a fine cell size. It's just going to give me a little bit more control over kind of the how it looks and how it draws those. And I'm just going to let it help set and automatically select the search radiuses based on my grids. Um, <clears throat> going to go ahead and just start the gridding, let it run real quick. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just draw the time slices. Um, I'm gonna come in the time slice menu quickly, pull open. Uh, this is, I called it BP edited for band pass editing. Um, I'm gonna <clears throat> come in 24 grids. Let's do, uh, there are 24 of them, six. Let's do six of them. I'm just gonna draw this out. Actually, let's not do six, let's do uh, four. And that's just going to control how many rows I have. Um, so here we go. We're going to just draw out very quickly the time slices from top to bottom, all 24 of them. Um, top, probably three here. We see uh, the depth that this this structure ended up being at was about 30 to 35 uh, centimeters below surface. Um, and you can see that once we get mm-hmm. to there, there's wow. nothing, right? It's, it's pretty clear. Um, sandy soil. Um, there's probably some shell, there's probably some, you know, pottery, there's probably some rocks that are, that's popping up in some of this stuff. Um, but once we get down to around kind of the, our 17 to 29 centimeter mark, we start beginning to see some potential linear things. Um, but once we get down to kind of uh, the 30 to 40 centimeter, which is where the bulk of these features mm-hmm. were at, see a very clear line here, pretty line here. This ended up being a clay pad. Uh, to hold up a post, um, another thing here. And so this is a wall trench. There's some trenches, there's some posts set in it. Um, and then there's an interior kind of partition wall here as well. Um, and to give size, this is about seven meters by seven meters square. Um, so you can see just how from beginning to end from raw to fully processed, interpretable, actionable data mm-hmm. took us probably oh, yeah. realistically only 10, 15 minutes um, mm-hmm. in terms of getting it in, looking at it, Making decisions on what processing we should be do, what we should we should or shouldn't do on this data, and then producing some type of data um, that is either this is deliverable data. Yeah. Like I could I could send this to a client. now. Have you never put um, you don't do low pass filters on this? Um, so it depends. And this one does. Yeah. Uh, this one I think I put a whenever you do the uh, blue box, it it kind of mm-hmm. populates a three by three low pass. Um, if, if you want, but you can turn it off in the blue you want, box. If you turn it off, yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah. run it. But in this case, uh-huh. it's not run on this, in, on that data that I just drew. Yep. Um, yep. I well, mean, you know, it's interesting because a lot of times we'll run the the, the low pass because it, it again smooths it out and makes it looks really, you know, it makes it look clean. Yeah. But with everything you do, right, you can always take away. And in your case, 
you're literally looking for individual post holes that might be this size. And yeah, you they're, like 10, to, they're 10 centimeters diameter. You know, you might actually start to lose some of that detail that you want, even though, you know, yeah. it might be a little, I don't well, say let's, noisy, let's, let's look at this here. Like, let's look at the 29 to 41. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, everybody can see kind of generally what it looks like. Let's go run a quick mm -hmm. low pass and let's see what it mm -hmm. does to it. Yeah. yeah. It won't take. And I want right, it, may, it may take out some of the things that you're hoping to see some of that you know, really fine detail. So we'll go ahead and run the 2D low pass and we can let's, and as it's running through, we can see kind of if it changes anything drastically. Um, maybe in that one corner, it, it kind of pulled, it kind of smoothed some stuff that might have not been, but the three by three mm -hmm. didn't, doesn't look like it's doing um, kind of two ton of work. Ton, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think yeah. I've ever used more than a three by three. Um, yeah, just yeah. You, you know what I have? Yeah, you know what I have? when it was large scale survey and we're looking for really large targets like voids That's or fair. if we're looking for like macro scale geological or ge morphological variations, mm -hmm. you know, I up to nine or 11 or, you know, but, but it's so rare. It's gotta be such a unique yeah. application to go that high up. Generally it's three by three or five by five, maybe. Yeah. But you know, even here you can see three by hundred percent changed it has, here. Yeah. Has, has kind of mushed, a bunch of stuff together. Yep. And sometimes, look, if you're doing a utility survey, like you want that stuff connected, right? Yep. It's just easier to present to somebody. But in this case, you do kind of lose a bit of that, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that kind of finite individual response, which probably actually represent an individual target that's yep. underneath. And, and, we, and we, and we, and I mean, the thing is, uh, yep. these are, these are posts set in a trench. And mm -hmm. so the difference between the trench and the post can be minimal sometimes, you know, and, sure. and honestly, what we ended up finding was a shell that was in these. Mm -hmm. it, we were not wow. actually finding the post. We were finding shell in the, yeah. um, from when either the posts were pulled and it was refilled. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's just a small setting and you're, you know, that's the one important thing and why we always kind of preach and talk about uh, 90 to 95% of our, our processing requires very limited. Yeah. Yeah. Basic changing basic processing. Everything Absolutely. you do changes the data in some way. Even this three by three low pass that a lot of people are like, oh yeah, let's smooth it out. Let's make it look great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, in this right. instance, it might not be right for the data. So it's really important Correct. to always double back, make sure what are my questions? What am I trying to get out of this data? Am I just processing mm -hmm. for processing sake? Right. Yep. Um, right. What am I actually trying? And people get caught in that, you know, yeah. and that's why we, you know, when we teach at the course, we always teach, you know, you should ask the question before you start, yeah. how much processing do I need and how much time should it realistically take? Exactly. If you don't do that. You could go down that rabbit hole of just spending time. Well, what if I do this tweak? What if I do this tweak? What the, the interpretations haven't changed. No. So it's still and the I've, in this data set, like from when I, so this was collected 2017, mm -hmm. I think. I've mm -hmm. processed, like I spent, like when I originally did it, I spent months going mm -hmm. through right. because I was, I was, I was going to spend it's also in summers our, excavating. In, and in our discipline, that's, it's, it's more normal to spend more time. Yeah. And if you're in an academic setting, you have more freedom yeah. to actually do that. But in so, the, but the point the, is like in the end, that didn't matter. Like my interpretations. Correct. We're the same from the get go. Yeah. Right? When I, when I got it raw and I pulled it out. Which right, they were the same. Up. Right, popped up. Right. I was like, "Oh, that's a great point." Yeah, it's a great point. But like three years so, on, after it, nothing changed. Right, My interpretations have not changed. Right. Yeah. Um. Cool. Well, look. A any any uh, final kind of thoughts? I think it's about time to hop. But, um, you know, look, we're going to try to do this often. And look, if there's a if there's a type of application or data set that you want us to do a data processing live stream on, put it in the comments. You know, we cannot read minds. Like, un unfortunately, I wish we could. It'd be cool. <laughs> We don't even need GPR because we could just, you know, yeah. shoot out of our eyes. But until that day, we can't read your minds and put comments below about what type of applications you're interested in, what you want us to do these on. We hope this was helpful. If this was helpful for you, please click the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. And share it. No, and share it. Right. Yep. And share it. We're trying to help as many people as we can. Nobody else is doing this. Nobody else is taking their data sets, putting them up on screen and literally processing them in real time for you. Um, we're happy to do that. So if there's a utility data set or a concrete or a void or whatever it is, let us know what you're looking for. If there's a particular um, data processing software you want us to do this on, let us know that, mm -hmm. okay? We have about four different software packages or five or, or, or so, maybe six actually, but um, we're happy to help. And so let us know. Uh, we appreciate you watching. All right, Tyler, it was great to get you on your first live. Right.
webinar stream. It's good. Uh, it's fun. This is, really I enjoyed good. it. There was a lot of info in that actually. There's yeah. a lot of info. So if you came in late, start from the beginning. Uh, put comments in, like it, share it. We appreciate you, and uh, and, and we're going to see you all next time.